<laughs> it's a deep thinking Wednesday on the Ask Gary V Show. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> there you go, that pretty much summed me up. I can deep think, but I don't know what the f-ing day of the week is. <laughs> on this episode, we talk about Pinterest's ad product, and then we got really, really, really deep. <laughs> You ask questions and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. Jab, jab, jab. Hello everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 85 of the Ask Gary V Show. Feeling pretty good, went to San Francisco yesterday, uh, going to Copenhagen tomorrow night. Uh, got Madrid next week, so doing some serious world traveling. Uh, the beard is coming in nicely, though. AJ's fiance, Ali, threw me for a curveball uh, the other night where she really innuendoed through her body language that she didn't want the beard for the wedding, which is June 11th, I think. So <laughs> that is, uh, that's thrown a curveball in my strategy of growing this out until the Jets lost. Um, so got to really decide if I want to be a, a, a good brother-in-law or, or do I want to be, I don't know, difficult. Um, what else is going on? Nothing too much. Meerkatting, got a bunch of cameras here that they've set up with phones, which I think is really rad. I'm enjoying kind of looking at that. Uh, enjoying the show. Um, been, uh, been really happy with the new Wine Library TV uh, design. Getting a lot of emails and tweets from all of you that liked watching me back in the day taste wine, so that's fun. Uh, super pumped about the Jets. Was proud of myself of getting Duke and Maryland in the finals. Uh, kids are growing up. Uh, my fantasy baseball team had a great opening day. I'm in second place after one day. And uh, I think I'm ready for the show. So, I like this. You know what, do you remember like episode 30? I was like, oh, I gotta do more like mm-hmm. cup of coffee, like, <laughs> like Regis and Kelly action. That was a little bit of that, that was fun. I have nothing here either, weird. Uh, all right, India, let's get into the show. No, I don't need a prop. I am a prop in myself. My personality is a prop. Hello. (laughs) Hello. Jeff asks, there's buzz around Pinterest advertising and they're slowly letting in biz accounts. Are you optimistic? Jeff, uh, this is a great question. You know, we haven't talked enough about Pinterest on the Ask Gary V show, so I appreciate the question. Good job, India, of picking that out. I'm a, I'm a, huge believer in Pinterest's product. Uh, You might have noticed uh, very recently that they've made it uh, uh, a a term of service that you can't do affiliate sales. My belief is that means that they are now gonna turn that on for themselves. And if you start thinking about the amount of commerce that goes on on Pinterest, even if they make 5% of every transaction, it could right away be one of the top five to 10 companies in revenue in the digital space. Uh, I'm a big believer in the business and seeing what's going on with Faithbox, Willie, the CEO, company we've incubated at Vayner RC, just like $4 in ad spending on promoted pins, some of the stuff we've seen at Vayner Media, the stuff I'm seeing from Wine Library. I'm, uh, I'm massively bu- bullish. I actually think that Pinterest's ad product, a year from today, let's call it 18 months from today, we will recall this video. Somebody make a note, put it into your calendar from 18 months from today. We will make a video or a piece of content, however we do it in those days, 18 months from now, to talk about this video where I make this claim, which is that Pinterest's ad product is a major competitor to Google AdWords for e-com businesses that are digital focused. Uh, enormously passionate about Pinterest's uh, ad product and I highly recommend everybody watching this. If you're selling something on a dot com, um, that you get very serious about understanding what's going on in a Pinterest environment. Bullish would be an understatement. What? Uh, super bullish. Super bull. Like, I'm into it. <laughs> Benjamin asks, like you, I believe there's so much to be gained from social media, but what do you think we have lost or are in danger of losing? Benjamin, I think this is a great question and I, I haven't given this a lot of thought because the truth is I'm such an optimist uh, and, and the truth is I think most people default into cynicism and pessimism that I think I allow those people to do that work for me. But what I do think about 
the one thing that is interesting to me is I do feel that all of us, especially the ones that decide to participate in putting out content, which if you look at the data, may not be at full full scale in the 70s and 80s and 90s, gets bigger as you go down and as the younger you get, the more you're really putting out content, whether in private form or public form. I think the most interesting thing is that I think we're losing peace of mind. And that's different than privacy. I think that we all now know we're living a life on the record, whether we decide to put it out there in selfie form or if we just happen to be in the background of somebody doing it. And what that does is it makes us all kind of be on the record, tense up, right? We're, we're in PR form. I think a lot of us um, are living the PR version of our lives to the public. It's always the pictures of us at concerts and on trips. Um, people do share, you know, my, my Facebook feed is really basically the extremes and maybe that, you know, I'm evolving my answer here. I think we're losing the middle. Maybe I'll change my answer because when I think about what's happening is everybody's like, look at me. I'm at a Beyonce concert front row, right? By the way, massively interesting data that I'm looking at of why people are now going to public events just to take the selfie to say they were there, which is why concert and sporting events. It's amazing how social is making the real world business go up. But then number two, I see a lot of people in my Facebook feed and my social feeds sharing their tragedies. Uh, you know, literally yesterday's Facebook scroll, which I do occasionally, was literally like people announcing that they've become sick or pictures of their daughter with open heart surgery, just these real extreme emotions. And then the other things, which is like, I'm at Bora Bora and I'm living the best life and I'm pouring champagne down my throat. The middle is getting kind of squeezed as we are going to social. And I think, ironically, the middle is peaceful, right? The middle is less tense. The, The middle is relaxing. The little lacks tension. And so for me, I'm good because I need insanity. Like right now I'm pissed As you may notice behind me, we've opened up a 12th floor. That's right, D-Rock, you're gonna go down there and film some 12th floor. And that hurts me because now the insanity's down a little bit, but I recognize that I'm an anomaly of somebody who needs to blast wheezy songs at full blast for a six hour flight to San Francisco yesterday to get off and be able to do my thing. Um, I worry about the people that are more centered or introverted um, in this environment where we're getting suffocated by storytelling and our public personas, whether we intend to do it or we become a byproduct of it. So. I think um, separating our, our public life to our private life is gonna become more and more difficult and we're losing that, that. It was just a hell of a lot easier back in the day. Ironically, keep it rolling, ironically I think that's where Snapchat's winning. I think Snapchat is content of the middle. Like if you think about it, the shit you put on Snapchat, you'd never make an Instagram photo, right? Like it's just the shit that just, you don't care because it goes away. You don't care about the lighting, like it's just, it's just You know, it's almost the closest thing to real life. Todd Carl asks, I've been in sales for over 20 years and I've excelled at being able to read people's body language. But how do you do that over the internet or on social media? Todd, first of all, India, you're crushing this episode or or maybe you, Vayner Nation, actually forget you, India, you, Vayner Nation, are crushing this episode with the questions. The, the, The truth is I love this question. I love it because I'm freaked out by the answer. And, and look, this falls very much into bravado and ego, but it's, you know, that's part of me too. I've been blown away by my ability to make that transition. I too did everything the way you did. I stood in a floor, I watched, I read, I do it all the time. It's why I love Q&A, it's why I love public speaking, it's why I don't have a set presentation. I'm reading the room in real time, I'm reading my staff, I'm, it's how I scale. My ability to read at scale, like walking through the 12th floor and be like, that person's in trouble. Like it's weird kind of like, I don't even like talking about it. It's like a really nice innate kind of skill that has helped me scale my personality. I, for some reason, feel those feelings in people's comments and tweets. Now, maybe it took me a long time to get the cadence. Uh, Of course, there's been times where I've maybe read into it wrong because context and tone is lost, but I've gotta tell you, my intuition is if you go hardcore in trying to do that through Twitter, through 
your Facebook comments on your posts, and this is more about me reading people responding to my stuff, so maybe I know where the North Star starts, but it's been stunning to me that exactly what I've done in the real world is how I scaled Twitter specifically in being able to read people's motion and, and asking for clarity. Maybe in the real world, my man, we don't ask for clarity. I won't say, D-Rock, are you feeling, oh, I, you know, oh, you're feeling uneasy about this wine. Cool, let's go in a different direction. Maybe I have to ask that a little bit more tangibly, black and white, in a conversation on digital, but it's the same effort, same mentality, and the beauty is emojis and short form and slang have given more context around the written word online, and we as human beings are great at communicating. People grossly underestimate our ability to be communicators, whether drawing on caves, or making smoke signals, or radio, television, the written word, the internet, commenting, uh, emojis. We're talented at this, and I'm watching all of us evolve. You know, very many of us, um, uh, many of you who have been romantic about grammar have finally let it go. Um, you know, all of us are misspelling words on purpose so it autocorrects because we value the speed. Uh, we're using emojis from not only 13 year olds or just people in Asia, now it is a worldwide phenomenon. Um, we're evolving and we're great at it. And so I, I look for those cues and I keep trying to evolve and stay ahead of where I think we're all evolving to. Hey Gary, Ryan here from onproperty.com.au. Just want to say thank you because your book Crush It allowed me to go out full time on my own. My question is, why did you start a service business, your agency, instead of starting a media company which you seem really good at? Ryan, great question. I mean, this is all, can we get like, get, can you make some sort of like all time great episode alert thing here? Put it in my hand. <laughs> um, this is a great question and it's, and it's a very specific detailed answer uh, for a couple reasons. One, I'm not sure that I was aware of how good I was at it five years ago. Two, I had an inclining uh, when we started VaynerMedia, the first project we worked on was something called daily1to10.com and we were doing Facebook fan pages driving to a Tumblr. Um, so I was on that kick from the get but three, the most practical thing was I knew that speed mattered and that money mattered and that scale mattered and the agency client service business was very obvious to me as the quickest path to scale and money because now we have Vayner Publishing and we're building out lostletterman.com, you can check it out, we just bought it, wait for the redesign but we're now starting to get into the media business and we have the infrastructure and the scale and the skill set and I have 500 people that I've been able to affect with my thinking, they've got to counter that with their own thinking but clearly as the CEO and a thought leader in the space, I'm sure I'm evolving their thinking towards a direction that picks up speed because the more I agree with them and they agree with me, the quicker we can be at what we need to do and so really, the answer to your question is because I'm patient. Uh, you know, I thought the right strategy was to build out an infrastructure that allowed me to get to it later. Plus, not to mention, media has evolved enormously in those five years. And if you look at media and the upside of media and the media sites of today, five years ago they were very predicated on SEO and SEM, something that I never really loved. Now we're predicated more on social sharing and content, something I love more. And so I, I think that. My intuition, and I'd like to think rightfully so, at the time was I was not the perfect player for that time, but my intuition was there's a chance that the market may move into that if I'm in a certain place in five years to capture the market's evolution on the media side perfectly, then I can win triple and I think I'm starting to maybe play out and benefit on that bet. And so I was just strategic about it. Antoine asks, what usually prompts you to walk away or turn down great opportunities? Well, Antoine, I don't want to be in the business of saying no to great opportunities. Uh, I'd like to think that the answer to the question is my intuition and I'd like to think my intuition is allowing me to walk away from bad opportunities that may look good on paper. Um, you know, I, I just go with my intuition. There are really nothing else. I mean, I'm not an analytical thinker, right? I'm not gonna look at a whole lot of data. Uh, a lot of these big funds that try to ask me like, well, how did I know this startup was gonna be great or why did I think this was gonna be great? It was never predicated on monthly active users or some sort of other data set. It was me, what I would like to say is that I like to taste things. It's me observing 
and then me counterpunching that observation. Uh, and I tend to be very, very all in on my intuition. And so um, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of how I make the calls. And so uh, it's funny the way you ask the question. You ask the question in what I think is more of a defensive mindset, which is if you, if you break down the question, it ends with the real kicker, which is, run it one more time for me, India. How do you? How do you, what usually prompts you to walk away from or turn down when to say no to great opportunities. To me that never runs through my mind. The thought of like saying no to great opportunities is just not in, I don't put those words in that pattern of a sentence. Um, and so that is what I think you should be thinking about. It sounds to me that you're crippled by the miss. I'm not. I, I just keep having the at-bats and the swings and I, I know that I'll have more wins than losses and if I pass on something good, so be it. But it literally, I mean, We've talked about on this show before, passing on Uber's angel round twice and leaving $300 million on the table, literally outside of being a great story to tell you how I feel, doesn't come into my mind ever. And, uh, well maybe once in a blue moon, but pretty much never. And I think that's an important thing and uh, an offensive mindset versus a defensive mindset. Something, something I want to get deeper into content team. That's everything. Cool. Um, question of the day. What is the biggest miss of your career? What is the one thing you said no to that worked out great? I, I had a meeting the other day with a, a woman who passed on being one of the first 600 or 500 employees at Google. She felt pretty down about it. Um, you know, uh, and so I'm fascinated by that. And so give me your answer. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Much love. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, he's a Jets fan. He's used to losing. That hurts. All right. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>